I heard you did a like over a hundred miles mm-hmm. bike ride. Yeah. Okay. And this was to raise awareness for MS. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we talk about your, the journey of MS for you? Like what was the symptom? What kind of, what happened with that whole thing? Cause that, that seemed to be a pretty sudden thing that you discovered. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it took, um, it took about three years to get diagnosed with MS. Really? So, yeah. It's, it's really tough. So it's, if you don't know what MS is, it's multiple sclerosis. I have a hard time saying that. I can't spell it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's MS. <laughs> um, but your body attacks your own nervous system. So your, um, immune system attacks your nervous system and, and it focuses on the wrapper around your spinal cord and on your brain. So like your body gets it like a really bad cold or flu Mm -hmm. and your immune system goes to work on that flu and then says, okay, you know, we're, we're done beating up this flu. Hey, let's eat on this for a while. And it chews on your own spinal cord. Wow. So, and it, it causes these lesions or scarring, which is the Latin sclerosis means scarring. So multiple scarring things. So wherever your scarring is correlates to what your symptoms are going to be. So that's why it's so different for everybody. So, so it can happen anywhere. Like it it can start along from your brain to your spine and mostly the top half of your spine. So like right now my left hand is numb. Really? Yeah. And, uh, my right one's kind of going and my left foot's tingling. Um, So does that, does the symptom, the tingling and stuff, is that like a thing that happens for a little bit and then goes away or does it just slowly kind of stay? I didn't, you know, yes, <laughs> depending on the day, it's, okay. it's different symptoms. Um, and the, the weird thing is like, I can't walk two miles. Like I, I would probably break down because my left leg would just start like dragging behind me, Okay. but I could ride a bicycle 110, like in one shot. Yeah. So it, it makes no sense. And it's so weird like that. And some people can run. I can't run. I mean, that would be fall on the floor, but, mm-hmm. um, that's how I got diagnosed. I was every time I got off an airplane, I would fall in the airport and really? I would trip all over the place. And people just thought I was drunk. Yeah. And a lot of times I was, <laughs> but I am a little right now. Um, but it's nine thirty in the morning. Not even. <laughs> it's not drunk. even nine. It's eight fifty-five. It's before nine. <laughs> you can't be drunk all day if you don't start early. That's true. So um, yeah, so I, I went through this process and they thought it was this and this and the other thing and finally I went to um, Shan's Hospital in Gainesville and they uh, diagnosed me there. Uh, and that was, I got that diagnosis the week before I got married. So, wow. yeah, we've had a lot to kind of put up with, um, mm-hmm. besides you guys know, besides <laughs> getting married, right? Like mixing your checking accounts, like whose well, idea was yeah, that? Right. Like, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> so. so when, I mean, this is three years in the making of mm-hmm. trying to figure out. So what, did you have any ideas leading up to that? Like, the it's last probably, year, okay. they were like, mm, you know, they didn't want to say anything. They're like, oh, it's probably nothing. And then, like, you kind of get further down. And they're like, oh, it's probably something, you mm-hmm. know. But, uh, yeah, so once once it was almost like a relief once we knew. Yeah. Um, I just wish, like, bike MS is like a big push. Over a million people or around a million people in America have MS. Wow. So okay. it's, it's a pretty big disease. And mm-hmm. bike MS is the biggest cycling fundraiser for anything, uh, and especially fundraiser for MS. Mm. So I just wish that we like, it, it was just like bowling and pizza and beer MS. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, cause biking's hard. <laughs> I don't like exercise. I, yeah. I'm not an exercise guy. Like I'm still chubby and <laughs> I've ridden, you know, a hundred miles a week. You know, I ride 5,200 miles a year. Well, imagine like, how you would look crazy. if it was bowling and pizza. Yeah. And oh my God. I was going to say. I'd be a lot happier. <laughs> my rear end wouldn't hurt so much. <laughs> so biking, how do you prepare for something like that? I ride three or four times a week. Um, and I'll either ride fast or, or like fast and short distance or kind of long and average distance. And uh, my uh, neighbor, Andy, goes to church here, too. He rides with me and he's a nurse, which is great because I fall mm-hmm. a lot. And <laughs> Wait, you fall oh, riding I, yeah, the bike? I'll, I'll crash on the bike, yeah. Yeah. Oh my and we did last year, we did a, this event called Piggy's Revenge, which we had <laughs> no idea what we were getting into. <laughs> but it was 60 miles of off-road muck in Ooh. January. And we were like waist deep in water carrying our bicycles over our head. And what was it called? Piggy's? Piggy's Revenge. <laughs> yeah. It's in uh, Venice. Okay. And it's, it's um, yeah. Oh, it was a, it was it a good time. It sounds like Piggy 
really didn't like bike riders or yeah. something like oh, that. Oh, it was it was brutal. There's <laughs> there's clips of it on the internet. Somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't want to find those. <laughs> there's a lot of censoring. Anytime you say you don't want to find those. Yeah, those, that's not my best we're moments. Gonna, we're going to have to find those. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so you prepare just by doing, by just continuing to ride. Yeah. And then what is it? So the the actual bike MS, that's mm-hmm. like a one time everyone's there like cheering people on. Yeah. There's over 75 rides a year across the country. I, okay. Actually over 85. Um, and I do, um, this year I'm scheduled to do three rides. Ooh. I did. The first one was... Um, Miami to Key Largo and back. And then my second ride, I just finished, um, that was 150 miles round trip. Um, then this last one was a hundred miles from Orlando to Frostproof and back around the Bach tower. And then I'm doing another one in September. Um, I don't know how far it's going to be at 50 or a hundred or a hundred or 150 miles in uh, New Bern, North Carolina. That is, I mean, I just love how but the difference between one and one fifty. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it, fifty miles. That's crazy. Doesn't matter. Yeah, like I, I could, as chubby as I am, I could get up right now and go do a hundred miles. Really? Yeah, you just get to that point, and it's it's not that big of a deal. So, where what's your mental state while you're doing that? It's um, that's the hardest part. Is you get to eighty miles and you got to prepare for it. Like you got to just fight through it. And mm-hmm. I was telling the guys in uh, men's group earlier, we got to 96 miles in Orlando. I rode with my cousin, Phil, who has been to church here a couple of times nice. and uh, lives in New Jersey. And he came down to Florida to ride with me. And, um, we, uh, we were at mile 96 and the like storm clouds rolled in Oh no! and he never rode a hundred miles, which is like, like riding, running a marathon, you know, the 23 point whatever. Yeah. So like a century ride is a hundred miles and that's like a big thing in cycling. So, mm-hmm. um, the guys were pulling up next to me in the van saying, Hey, it's over. The ride's over. And I'm like, I'm just a guy on a bike. And I handed him my, my number and I was going to finish the the ride Whoa. and the guy's like no you can't you, you know you sign the the form and you got to come with us because of the weather and I said buddy I said I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to do this again mm-hmm. so um I just handed in my bib number and made it to the finish line my wife was there and Whoa. my my uh cousin's wife was there and uh, you know we just celebrated that and the guy came back up to me and he's like I can't believe you finished that yeah but yeah did was, you have to ride through rain yeah yeah <sighs> It was, yeah, I, it was so welcomed at that point. Cause yeah. I was stopped over on the side of the road, just slumped over the handlebars at like mile 80. Yeah. And like a, the same guy pulled up and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah. And, and he gave me a cold bottle of water and I was like, man, I needed that. Mm-hmm. It was, there was a lot of volunteers that really helped along the way. Yeah. Man, that, I think any kind of physical triumph like that, where you're like, you're on the balance between giving up, continuing all of that. And then when they're telling you like, no, you got to stop. And you're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. So was that something that you had set out? Like, are you the type of person that's like, if I'm going to set out on this race, I'm going to finish it. And like, that's what keeps you going. Or was it when he comes over and tells you like, no, you got to stop. That was the decision to be like, no, I'm going to finish now. It was going to take a police car to really? stop me at that point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cause I, I have a progressive form of MS, so it should like, If I just left it alone and didn't take any medications or didn't exercise, my mobility would slip for the rest of my life until I needed to be in a wheelchair. Wow. And um, I have a friend, Michelle, who was uh, diagnosed with MS about 15 years ago, and she is on the medications. Um, She was on the trial of the medications that I'm on now that my doctors will say will never put me in a wheelchair. Wow. But she got the placebo and she is in a wheelchair. So I always said that I can't like I have, she gave me this gift of mobility that, um, I won't waste. So I just keep riding. Yeah. Wow. That's super powerful. Yeah. So what is this? Is this new medication? Is this new science? Is this about two years old, three years old? Yeah. And I go for an infusion once every six months and What's an infusion? It's it's basically I, I go to a chemo center, okay, and they um, hook me up to a bag for six hours, and I scroll on the phone and mm-hmm. go to sleep and wake up and wow. The first time I did it, I rode twelve miles after. Whoa, so, okay, yeah, just to make sure I could. So yeah, yeah. So this is like a liquid thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. And then does is there any? I mean, obviously, if you rode 
a bike afterwards. There's probably not a whole lot of downtime. But you get like a cold after okay. it for like the last like ten days, but it's not. It's not like a bad cold. It's just like flu symptoms for mm. like ten days. It's it's it suppresses your own immune system, so your immune system doesn't attack your own body. Okay. And but then how long does that last for? So six you, months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then I take a pill twice a day. That okay. helps me with my actual balance, so I look less drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so I chase so, it with tequila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is, if this is new, um, I mean, I, I know very little um, about MS. There was, do you know who Selma Blair is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's the, the, honestly, the first person that I was like, what are the symptoms? Like, what does this look like? And mm -hmm. she walks with a cane and it affects her speech. Yeah. Which that's really interesting to me. So, so remember I told you like where on your spine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it happens closer to the neck and those are the nerves that go to your mouth or your, your, your voice box. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to be affected. Okay. Mine are the nerves that go to my hands and to my feet, which why my uh, hands and feet are affected. Right. And that affects my balance because my brain tells my body to adjust and it doesn't get the whole message. It's kind of right. like rusty wiring, I call it. Mm. And then doing these treatments, which are only two years old, is there, so is there hope for the future to have something that can, I mean, be diagnosed faster and all of that stuff? Like what is the goal with raising awareness for MS as far as you're concerned? Right. Well, I mean, to to create a cure, you got to really define a cure. So is a cure reversing damage, you know, fixing my spinal cord or, you know, which would be like reproducing the sheath around my spinal cord mm -hmm. or is a cure just being able to walk and function and not get any worse, you know? So they're kind of halfway in between a cure at this point because right. the drugs that I'm on with the infusion stop the progression and the pills I take help my balance. So I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm a lot better and a lot more grateful like my generation of people with this disease has a lot better outcome than, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whew, man, that's, it's so cool that you're, I mean, just who you are as a person, your sense of humor and how you're able to do what you're doing. And I feel like the raising awareness aspect of it, there's this draw for, I mean, you're grateful and it's almost this like this experience for all people to discover something that could be horrible to go mm -hmm. through. And when you see someone who's riding bike, like hundreds of miles on a bike and you're like, this is something that I'm, I'm going to conquer, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that mentality about it. And I, I, like I said, I watched Selma Blair and her, the way that she talks about it and the way she talks about herself, you're just like, there's something so cool about that. So cool about this like fighting attitude. And would you say that that's something that you've always had in your life? Like everything that you've done, you've always kind of had this, like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the best version of myself. Um, I don't like to half-ass things. <laughs> um, but I couldn't do what I do without the support of a lot of people around me. And that, um, I want to be better, like to be, I don't want to just be a good husband with MS. I don't want to be a good dad with MS eventually. I, I just want to be a good husband and a good right. dad and be able to do, you know, push the kid on the bike and learn, teach him how to ride a bike. And mm -hmm. I have a good family of my own family and my wife's family that supports me doing that. And, um, you know, the new job that I took, the real, the part of the reason why I took that job, because it was a lot more laid back atmosphere. And those are the, actually the new president that I work for now was one of the guys who pushed me to get my diagnosis because he saw something was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I've been friends with him a long time. So um, there's been a lot of things that put me into this position. And when I look at it, and I've, I've been through a lot of things in my life. My sister um, lost a child, she was like six. Mm -hmm. And I look at, I have friends that go to church here that are dealing with you know, horrible things with their children. And that that's so much worse in my eyes that you know, you put your problems there on the table, you normally take yours back. And, um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm grateful my problems are what I have. Cause, uh, um, I see a lot of more strength than what I have and what people deal with around me. 